Hey there friends. You're probably here because you're a brand new nurse and might feel a little bit overwhelmed, but I'm here to tell you that it will get better, okay? We're just gonna start right off with saying, I promise you it will get better. Nursing is kind of overwhelming in the beginning. In this video, I'm gonna share some of my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that I wish I knew when I first started, and just some little nuggets of wisdom I always like to give nurses that I would precept and found helpful to prepare them for their role of being a nurse. Also, congratulations on your job and for graduating. You are a rock star. If you guys are super new here, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner, but before I was a family nurse practitioner, I worked on both med surge and pediatric floors, and I was a preceptor. I was obviously a new nurse at one point, and today I wanna share some of that knowledge I've gained along the way with you. Let's get started. I'm hoping you'll leave today a little bit calmer knowing that you are not alone, and a few more resources that will help you succeed in your job as a new nurse. First, let's just say it's gonna be rough for like six months and it's gonna be okay. I promise you it will get better, but that first six months, that is a doozy. I want you to be patient with yourself, okay? Even if it's taking you're a little bit beyond the six month mark and you're just not quite there yet, give yourself a little bit of patience. Think about all of the new things that you're having to learn. It's a ton and you are doing a great job, but just be patient with yourself. Give yourself space to not know, to be unsure. And I just want you to totally embrace the fact that you don't know and that's okay and it will be okay. You will get to the point where you're going to slowly gain confidence and you're gonna go into work and be like, ooh, I know this one thing. The week after that, you're gonna know two things. Soon you're teaching other people. I promise, guys, if you are in those first couple of months, it's going to get better. Be patient with yourself and find other new nurses. The best community I found in those beginning days were just to commiserate with my other new nurses where we could all get together in the break room and be like, <laughs> help. Share our experiences. Realizing that you're not alone in something and that other people are struggling too makes you feel so much less lonely. So I would encourage you to go out, find those other nurses. If you don't have other new nurses on your unit, find a community online. Instagram is a great place for that. There's Facebook groups, but find a group of people where you can talk or go to your old nursing school buddies. You know, have a huge text discussion. I'm a new grad NP and I have a couple of my NP school friends and we just have a group message where we are just constantly texting. <laughs> how we feel inadequate, or little tips that we've learned to deal with those inadequacies, and it's been so helpful, and I would really encourage you to do the same, because I promise you, you are not the only one feeling alone. Not that that makes it any better, but you are not alone. Number two, ask all the questions, all of them. The absolute scariest thing I've realized in my years of nursing is a new grad that doesn't ask questions, that has this false confidence that comes off, and you all know the type of nurses I'm talking about, and they come off of orientation, and they just don't ask questions. They just go, and they do, because they think they know everything, and they don't even know that they don't know. Do you know what I mean? And that is scary. Do not be that person. Remember, you are dealing with people's lives, and if there's ever a time to double check, ask questions, even if you feel like the question might make you look dumb, it's better to make yourself be perceived as kind of like, oh, why is she asking that question? Rather than kill someone, because that's what we do in our field, is keep people alive. So if you don't double check, if you don't ask questions, you're putting your patients at risk, and that's not what you want. And honestly, in my experience, sometimes nurses maybe seemed a little bit annoyed that I was asking so many questions, but okay. They would be a lot more annoyed if I did something and then they had to go and redo everything I did because I did it wrong. Or even on the converse side, you don't wanna do something and make a mistake and have the patient be the one to suffer. I would rather suffer than have my patient suffer. It comes down to that. And most of the time, nurses are really good about recognizing you're a new nurse, you're gonna have questions. We would always rather you ask questions than to remain silent and at seven o'clock in the morning be like, ooh, I didn't realize that that was bad for so many hours, you know? No question is too dumb. If you're wondering it, there is a really good chance that other nurses at some point have wondered it. The nurse you're gonna go ask the question to has probably wondered this question before. Just ask it. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Someone thinks like, ooh, maybe your head's not screwed on quite right for like five seconds. They're gonna forget and you're gonna know. But a key thing here is knowing who to ask questions to. So you, if you are brand new, it's probably not gonna be the best idea to go to the person who is slightly like, two days less new than you, you know what I mean? When you're new to the unit, if you're precepting or you're brand new, ask a more senior nurse who seems like approachable and kind who they would ask questions to. Like, hey, when you are at, have a question, who do you go to? And they'll tell you. Nurses are very honest <laughs> and they're very good at telling you like, this is a good resource and that person is not. And another nurse is gonna be able to really clearly point you in that direction. They'll be like, do not ask her ask him, he's great, or she's another really good resource. Cause how are you supposed to know when you're brand new? You're not, 
but they know and they'll tell you, I promise. And then that gives you a good resource of people who you can go to for questions. And they're usually gonna be the type of people if they've been recommended that are you know, willing to answer those questions and be patient with you. And when you're asking these questions, make sure to ask where they found the information or where you can find the information. Because you can ask, you know, say you're saying like, ooh, I need to draw a renal function panel. You know, what color tube does it go in? And I can be like, hey, it goes in a yellow SST tube. And you're like, okay, cool. Ask where to find that information. That way next time you can ask, sure, and verify it and be like, hey, the yellow one? And be like, yep but you knew where the lab handbook was online to go look it up first. That also empowers you because then you feel like I know where to find information. I'm not this helpless little drowning baby in the ocean. I'm like kind of have my life raft, kind of know what I'm doing. And that's gonna really build you up mentally and make you prepared for if you don't always have someone right next to you to ask questions to. So learn to utilize your resources, ask questions, and my final tip on question asking, create a resource for what you don't know. This is mine as a new nurse practitioner. It's just a notebook. I alphabetized the tabs and all I write in this is things that I don't know. And I would super recommend you do it. I wish I had thought of it when I was a new nurse because hello, I think it's been super helpful. Say your patient's blood pressure is low and you aren't really sure what to follow up with on that. When you find out, you've gone through the whole motion, you found out what the solution might be, write it in your notebook under B, blood pressure, and then go low and then say, like write down, ask patient, are they dizzy? Do they feel lightheaded? Did we check it in both arms? What medicine have they gotten recently? Just kind of go through, you know, what we do for low blood pressure. What do we do when they're nauseous? What do you do if they have chest pain? That way, if you encounter it again, you can quickly reference it and be like, ooh, okay, I'll ask them this, and this is the intervention I can kind of anticipate. It's been wildly helpful for me as a new NP, and I think it would really benefit you as a new nurse. If you wanna see me go into more detail on that, I have a video which I'll link up here that talks all about how I use this notebook. Number three, use the buddy system. The buddy system is wonderful. If you're going in to do a new task, have someone just come in with you if they have time. Tasks are always easier with two people and then you'll have a second set of eyes who can kind of gently be like, yeah, like let's do it this way, you know, in the middle of it. Just, it's always comforting to have another set of hands there. Also volunteer to be the buddy. So on your unit, if you have a whole census sheet and it kind of shows their diagnosis, be alert and looking at that. See, if there's a patient on the unit, they might not be yours, but they have a diagnosis and a procedure going on maybe that you've never experienced. Let's say there's a patient and they have a ton of ascites and they're gonna have a bedside peritoneal tap. You've never had a patient that's had this. So you could maybe approach that nurse and say, hey, when you're gonna assist with that, can I come in with you and watch? And that nurse will always say yes, because one, they can use the help. And two, you're gonna learn about that situation without having it even be your responsibility and your patient. That way, when you encounter it, you'll already know. You're not gonna come off of orientation knowing everything and having seen everything. So you have to kind of make your own learning opportunities at this point. You are your own advocate. Implement your own buddy system and kind of work yourself on other people as their buddy be like I'm gonna come help you is that okay I've never had anyone ever say no when I offered to help them and I've learned a ton along the way just from watching and involving myself in situations that they wouldn't know to come get me for which leads really well into topic number four which is offer help to just everyone even if you're not really sure what you're volunteering yourself for if you see someone drowning offer to help it doesn't really matter if you don't know exactly how to do the procedure or do whatever they're needing help with they will tell you what they need along the way you're gonna learn a new skill again and you're gonna be perceived as a helpful person on the unit and if you're perceived as a helpful person on the unit other people are going to want to help you nursing is all about collaboration guys it's a team sport and my goal when I first started nursing was always that if people saw that they were working with me I wanted them to be happy and not like ugh, that girl never pulls her own weight and is so like just focused on her. I wanted them to be like, yes, I'm working with Liz. So I just always had that in the back of my mind that if I could help you, I would. I learned so much along the way from it and you just gain the respect from your coworkers and like I said, they're a lot more willing to help you out when you're drowning. Also, don't just offer to help the nurses. This is, remember, a huge team sport. If x-ray is coming to do a bedside x-ray, ask if they need help like turning, positioning, what you can do. If phlebotomy is coming by, maybe you can come help hold the patient. Do the techs need help? Guys, help just be a helper yes sometimes it takes a little bit of time and yes a lot of the stuff that you're helping with is like not stuff you necessarily want to be doing but it helps everyone else but it helps you too and just like we were talking about helping everyone number five here is be willing to learn from everyone i learned almost everything i know about direct patient care like cleaning people up turning how to position them how to move them to a new spot tips for getting patients to be compliant with certain things from techs 
other nurses didn't teach me that stuff. It was the techs who were like, hey, that's a terrible method, let's try it this way. And I learned so much, they are so knowledgeable. Everyone has their own thing that they are so knowledgeable about. I want you to approach everyone and everything as a learning experience because you can learn so much from everyone. And six, to kind of tie this all together, the hospital operates as a team and you need to be part of that team. Remember to be friendly, which sounds kind of silly, but I've noticed a trend over the years of nurses who come in and portray the attitude of, I'm better than you. Guys, this has to stop. I don't know if it's on purpose, I don't know what, but I've seen it over and over again where nurses come in, new nurses come in and they're like, well, I'm a nurse, I'm better than you. Guys, you are not better than anyone. We are all people here. Being kind has opened so many doors for me professionally and I've gotten so much feedback of like, wow, you're actually talking to me and that breaks my heart. Talk to people, guys. Your job, while it's important, is no more important than any of the other jobs in the hospital. And you need to treat everybody equally with kindness and compassion. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna be well-respected among your peers and things will go easier for you. Also, you're just being a good person, which is generally smiled upon. And side note, my little tangent here, in case you can't tell, this is like a hot button issue for me. We complain that physicians sometimes talk down to nurses, but then nurses do the exact same thing to the rest of people in the hospital. Like you'll be talking about pharmacy techs in a certain way or like, oh, phlebotomy this. And it's like, that's the pot calling the kettle black there, my friends. Moral of this story, and then I'll get off my soapbox, is just be kind, learn from everyone, be approachable, and share your knowledge. Number seven, set yourself up for success. You are probably already a ball of emotion and stress, so you're gonna need to sleep. If you're on night shift, I have a whole video on tips for night shift and how to succeed. I'll link it up here and at the end of the video, get sleep, take care of yourself. Being a new nurse is hard enough. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. That way you can show up for your patients and be the most prepared nurse possible. Also show up to work with the right amount of goodies that will help you succeed throughout your shift. If you're interested in what I brought to work and what helped me succeed while I was at work, I have a video on that too and I'll link that up here as well. All right, number eight, preparing for codes or when your patients are not doing well. My tip for when your patient is not doing well and you come in and you're kind of getting that feeling like something here is not feeling good, but I can't quite put my finger on it. That's just called intuition and it's always good to go phone a friend in this instance. It takes a long time as a nurse to kind of go in and be like, oh, that's the problem. It's a gained skill that you're going to get. It's just going to take time. But in the beginning, even now, I'm sure you've walked into a room before and you're like, something here. Mm, isn't good. But ask the charge nurse, ask the closest nurse in the hallway that seems friendly and just be like, can you just look at this person for me? And they can kind of like give you a little bit of reference point of like, hey, they look fine or whoa, they do not look fine. Let's get some other people involved. And if you do get other people involved, like your first RRT, those are always nerve wracking. You will be fine. Make sure the charge nurse obviously knows what is going on. They can be your resource. But a lot of times in RRTs, that's a rapid response. The physician is still like working very closely with you and can tell you like task by task. It's not chaos yet. If it gets to a code situation, codes are chaos. Guys, there, if you haven't been in one, it is just chaos and it's codes are a skill that you're going to slowly learn and my recommendation for you would be to involve yourself in them but give yourself a very measurable and simple task like compressions usually you have two or three nurses in the line giving compressions where you step up you give compressions you get a break the next one goes that's an easy task but you're in the middle of it you're immersing yourself in it you're learning you're helping but you're not doing something that is I mean, you're doing compressions, which is pretty critical, but you know, you're not getting the meds, you're not drying them up, you're not charting something where you can like really screw this thing up. And then over time, you're going to slowly just be able to assume other roles that have a little bit more responsibility behind them. And you won't even realize it's happening until one day you're kind of standing there like really being an integral part of this whole thing and you're like, oh, okay, I'm a grown up, look at me. And it'll just happen, it just takes time, so. Just involve yourself if you can, even if you're just a runner, being the person outside the door where you're like, I need flushes, I need this, I need this. Be that person, that's super helpful and you're kind of getting a visual of the entire experience. And just remember, no one comes out of BLS or ACLS being able to run their own code. I remember walking out of like ACLS and I was like, I'm a rock star and I'm gonna be able to run this code when it happens. And then I had to hit my first code button and I was like, I wanna hide under the bed. I know nothing. I want nothing to do with this, please help me. So don't be down on yourself when that's your experience. It's totally normal, it's gonna come with time. Tip number nine is just show up a little bit early. I know it totally stinks that you're not getting paid for it, but I used to show up just 15 minutes early for my shift. 
That way I could get my patient assignment, look it over, kind of just get a grasp and a handle on it. That way I could go into report confidently. I could ask the nurse really quickly, like, I don't understand this order. Could you clarify it for me really quick? You could look over the meds. Did they give all the meds? And you just don't feel like a deer in the headlights because you're not familiar with these diagnoses yet, what the typical treatments are. And I remember when I didn't get there early in the beginning, like you were giving me report maybe, but nothing was registering in this brain. I was like, all the words you're speaking might as well be in Mandarin in because I don't know what they are. And getting there a little early just kind of set the foundation for I was like, okay, yeah, like I got you. I understand those words coming out of your mouth. We can do this. And over time, that's also going to change. You know, that lasted maybe like a year. And then after that, you can see the major diagnoses and you know, okay, this is what they have. This is, these are the order sets that I'm expecting. And you know, most of the interventions and are comfortable with them. So you don't have to do that anymore. But in the beginning, super duper helpful just to get there 15 minutes early for your own peace of mind. Tip number 10 is speak up. Guys, you have to be your own advocate now. It's okay if you need help, ask. Now I'm not saying you have to wanna to be that nurse that asks for help with every single task, but just like with the questions, it's so much safer to, if you feel like you're getting to the point where you're drowning, ask for help. And when people ask you if they can help you, accept help, find some task for them to do. When I was a new nurse, I remember thinking that people would think I was failing if I accepted help because I was like, nope, I can manage it all. Guys, you cannot manage it all in the beginning. So give someone a simple task that they can help you with and you'll be amazed at how much it can sometimes just like lighten your whole burden that you feel like you're walking around with the burden of the world on your shoulders. But if you go empty that Foley bag for me, that will help, accept help. We all need help sometimes. Let people know if you're drowning, they can help you. It's so much easier to help someone who's in the beginning stages of drowning rather than at the end stages of drowning when you go to help them and they're like, I'm three hours behind on all my meds. Like, uh, you know, that's harder to pick up the pieces from. And the second thing with speaking up is you need to stand up to yourself if you feel that you're being taken advantage of by other nurses who are giving you report. I've had experiences where something like this kind of happens where they're like, ooh, I forgot to give this. Can you just give it when we're done here? No, hey, I actually have a lot going on in the beginning. Can you give it before you go? There's obviously a lot of good nurses out there, but there are a couple of those bad apples that'll try to prey on new nurses and be like, ooh, I'll just pass that off to them. You know, in report and act like I didn't even know I hadn't done it. No, if they're coming at you and saying something like that, like, ooh, I forgot to give that six o'clock med, now it's 7.15, like, can you just give it when we're done with report? No, my friend, you give it before you go home. Like, we're not playing this game, okay? And then they'll quickly learn that you're not someone who's gonna just be able to be taken advantage of like that, but set that precedent now. If you're always a yes person, which in the beginning you want to be a yes person, you want to please everyone, but don't be stepped on, okay? You don't need to be stepped on. And my last tip is just about paging providers. This used to give me so much anxiety as a new grad because I was like, I don't wanna not tell you something, but I don't know what is an overshare. First, we'll just talk about paging them for vitals that are kind of a little bit wonky, but not something that is bad yet, but you have to tell them. Your order sets will say, notify provider for you know blood pressure, systolic, less than this. In your page, just do like an FYI page, say FYI. Blood pressure is this, they are stable, they're not symptomatic, I just have to let you know, that one's easy. But phrase it like that, make sure they know in the page that everything's fine, you just have to let them know. And if you don't get a response, that's fine, doesn't matter, you just legally have to let them know. And the second type of page is more like, something is wrong and I would like your attention. Now, the good way to go about this in the beginning is I always like to, remember the buddy system, bring a buddy in and be like, hey Susan, like, would you page them about this? And Susan's either gonna be like, no friend or yes friend. And if it's a yes, I just want to encourage you that sometimes you'll get slightly snarky re like remarks if you page your provider and they're like, yeah, I don't care. Okay, at least you told them. If it's something you really feel like this is really a problem, keep pushing. You can go up the ladder with who you're paging, but never ever feel bad that you're paging. This is their job to take care of these people, okay? Like, yes, it stinks that they might be getting woken up in the middle of the night, but don't you feel bad? I don't want you to ever not page because you're worried about the resident might not get like a couple hours of sleep. It totally stinks for them and I a thousand percent feel for those residents and I don't know how they do it, but at the same time, like you gotta tell them and they gotta wake up and deal with it. So don't let you feeling bad eclipse safe patient care. If you get yelled at, guys, I can't even tell you how many times I've gotten yelled at by people who were not happy. I paged them about something. But I've also saved a lot of scary situations for patients that could have gotten a lot worse if I hadn't gotten yelled at by calling them. 
You know what I mean? And I don't want to in any way make it sound like all these residents are mean. There are a ton of residents out there who, you know, you page them, even if they're sound asleep, they show up with a smile every time and they are sent from heaven and they are great people. And then there's just those couple of ones where you're going to get yelled at guys. You're going to run into crabby people. They're going to yell. It's going to be totally fine. You're going to be fine. I promise. All right, that's it, my friends. Hopefully after listening to these, you feel a little bit more prepared or at least a little bit less alone going into your role as a new nurse. Again, congratulations on your job. That is so exciting. You're out of school. Yes, that's the best feeling. Make sure to check out those other videos if you think they would be helpful for you in succeeding as a new nurse. Again, if you're new here, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I make weekly nursing videos just like this one and a weekly vlog documenting my journey as a new FNP. So if you're into that, consider subscribing below and head on over to Instagram where I post all sorts of clinical goodies throughout the week. If you've been hanging around for a while, welcome back. I'm super duper grateful that you're following along on this journey with me. Now it's time for our question of the week, which is what do you do to like relax in between shifts, after shifts, after work? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a nurse. What do you do to like chill out and just relax? when you need to rejuvenate after a stressful day at work. Let me know down in the comments below. And my friends, just remember it will get better. It will get better. I will see you all next time. Have a absolutely wonderful week. Bye.